hello dear friends welcome back to my youtube channel mukesh english in this video i have brought to you a famous novel titled the thousand faces of night written by a famous novelist geeta hariharan so let's know about geeta hariharan geeta hariharan was born in 1954 she is an indian writer and editor based in new delhi her first novel the thousand faces of night won the commonwealth writers prize for the best first novel in 1993 her other famous works include the short story collection the art of dying 1993 and the novels the ghost of wasu master 1994 when dreams travel 1999 in times of siege 2003 fugitive stories to uh, history, history uh, sorry histories 2009 and i have become the tide published in 2019 and a collection of essays titled almost home cities and other places published in 2014 that's about geeta hariharan let's know the background of this novel the thousand faces of night geeta hariharan's debut novel the first novel the thousand faces of night was first published in 1992 it articulates the problems of women with the help of indian mythology this novel won the commonwealth writers prize in 1993 so you need to understand that in this novel the problems of women have been portrayed with the help of indian mythology with the help of few stories which have been extracted from indian mythology in this novel geeta hariharan she links the plight the the plight the pain of her women characters with the indian myths for example ramayana mahabharata so she has extracted lot of stories and she has connected those stories with the women character with the women characters in this famous novel the thousand faces of night indian mythology is connected with the stories about gods goddesses even the legendary heroes mentioned in the epics like ramayana and mahabharata and these collections of myths are also called as the puranas so one thing all of you i mean to say the listeners you all of you have to understand that in this novella the in this novella the writer geeta hariharan has brought many stories from ramayana mahabharata and she has connected those stories with the painful life with the plights of these women characters that's the reason the the title says here thousand faces of night so many different facets of women have been portrayed in this novella now up next let's understand the introduction of this novella or novel the story of the thousand faces of night revolves around three women characters all of you should remember there are three important women characters are here devi she is the main characters the main protagonist of this novel second is sita sita is devi's mother devi's mother sita and the another one character is here mayamma mayamma she is a caretaker as well as she is a cook so there are three important women characters here devi the main character devi's mother sita and mayamma she is a caretaker and as well as a cook the story of these women tells us about the society's patriarchal pattern the society's expectations and the taboos led by men of the world are vividly portrayed so the domination of men or the society in the society that is called here patriarchal pattern and in this pattern how the women uh, have do struggle then the there's a story within a story the pattern of the story is here story within a story is a narrative technique which geeta hariharan employs within the within the novel so in this novel you will get another technique is here story within a story means to say you are reading a story the thousand faces of night and in this novel or in this story you are getting so many other stories so this novel also talks about three generations to substantiate her stories geeta hariharan uses some techniques mythological allusions from the great epics of india and to symbolize the endless struggle of womanhood so she collects 
a lot of resources from mythological allusions of the great epics of India and she symbolizes the endless struggle of womanhood. So that's a brief introduction about the story or about the novel, The Thousand Faces of Night. Now let's begin the, the events or the incidents or the timeline of the story. To begin with, Devi and her story. So one thing you need to remember here, Devi is very much affluenced or, or have, have a lot of impact by the stories of her grandmother. And she connects each and every story which have been told to her by her grandmother in her childhood. And she brings up those stories. She connects those stories with her real life situations. And later we find the whole novel in this manner. So Devi, the central character of the novel, is born in the traditional Brahmin family. She went to the US on a scholarship to do her master's. She's portrayed as a young, educated girl with her American experience. She grew up among the stories and the myths which have been narrated to her by her grandmother. As a curious child, she always questions about the conditions of women around her. Grandmother always makes her understand her inquiries through storytelling. So she always brings up some a lot of curiosity. She asks so many questions when her grandmother tells a story and she connects everything which are happening around her. Devi in her childhood. Now let's talk about her childhood. So in her very childhood, she is socially conditioned to achieve the idea of ideal womanhood. So in her childhood, the uh, the idea already got generated in ideas, sorry, in her mind when she was keep on listening the stories of um, all the ideal women through grandmother. So she started to portray that a woman will be like this when the uh, lady grows up and a girl grows up. So these myths constitute the fabric of the novel, The Thousand Faces of Night. And through these stories, Devi retrieves the marginal figures of Gandhari, Amba, and Ganga, which relate to their minority status in the society, almost forgotten and often rendered silent and invisible in the patriarchal version of myths. Devi grows older. As Devi grows older, she begins to draw a link between the stories of her grandmother and the real life stories around her. Devi's curio curious mind reveals indirectly that the myths and the epics need to be reviewed and reinterpreted from the humanist point of view. Instead of being completely conditioned by the cultural influence, she tries to find a way out. As she grew older, she begins to see that the problem lies in finding the suitability of ideal mythical characters in the contemporary society. As I mentioned, as I already told that, she always finds those characters, she searches those characters in her real life situations, the characters which she heard through the stories by her grandmother. Now, the story begins here. The concept of Swamvara, Nala and Damyanti. Later, when she came of age, Devi's mother decided to marry her to Mahesh. So Devi's mother, Sita, she decided that Devi should get married. And they all decided that Devi should get married to a person called Mahesh, who was a regional manager of a multinational company at Bangalore and whose, jobs, whose job always demands long tours. He always used to travel from one place to another place. Nurtured with the mythological stories of a grandmother, Devi dreams of Swamvara for herself. Just see here how those stories are going to impact her real life situation. And she imagines she dreams of Swamvara for herself. Devi recollects her grandmother's story of Damyanti that was taken from Mahabharata. Nala, the king of Nishad, was handsome, brave, virtuous. So here, again, she recalls the story which her grandmother used to say, the story of Damyanti, which is taken from Mahabharata, the great epic. And Nala, the king of Nishad, he was a very handsome, brave and virtuous person. Damyanti's father decided to told her Swamvara, 
she was brave damyanti was brave and determined to embrace nala so she threw the garland around his neck and embraced him amidst all the conspiracies made by even by the gods her grandmother concludes the story with a moral what's a moral by grandmother a woman gets her heart's desire by great cunning look at here what she has learned from this she has learned some sort of cunning cunningness uh, from the story here and grandmother says here a woman gets her heart's desire by great cunning this story of nala and damyanti fascinated devi from this story devi understood the concept of swayamvara now let's find out the relationship of devi and mahesh devi's husband mahesh however the marriage proves wrong later devi gets married with mahesh but it does not get success why neither devi nor mahesh has any interest in making the marriage work her relationship with her husband mahesh is marked by loneliness silence disconnect sorry discontent mahesh is more of a businessman than ideal husband lack of communication suffocates and chokes her voice and disintegrates her sensibility so that means to say a cordial relationship between a husband and wife has not grown up and still devi does not consider mahesh as her husband she is still in that uh, mode of uh, swayambara so devi and gopal so another person who enters in devi's life later in the novel devi is fascinated by an indian singer gopal for his sincerity and devotion to work and finally what happens she runs away she elopes with gopal in order to take revenge of mahesh and that decision was taken less for love than to show her rage of rejection of a de- demeaning marriage that had crushed dignity in an individual aspiration she would like to take a revenge of mahesh because she has not he has not shown his true love for her so she had run away with gopal just to show her rage of rejection and demeaning marriage she had crushed her dignity and individual aspiration with gopal she again gradually develops the same sense of void same kind of dejection she was getting and he does not recognize her indig- individuality so devi is yet to reach her destination and crave out a niche for herself once again she protests and craves for survival on her own therefore in the end in the end she realizes that she is tired she is tired of drifting between the worlds like a floating island searching for props so she is very confused lady she is not even much satisfied or much happy even with gopal so she is lurching her emotions are lurching here then she is in in the quest of finding her own self it's a kind of reflection devi seeks to find her own authentic self swabhiman something like her own antaratma jag gayi uski secure some some firm holding of the main land she goes back to her mother in search of her roots she passes through multicolored relations till she establishes a contact with her real self and takes a step to attain a balance in her life so what does she do she started to have a quest for her self image so thus the thousand faces of night is the story of devi's quest for self image now you have understood that what is the theme of the story it is a quest it is a search hunting for devi's self image having failed to define her identity as a wife or even as a rebellious lover she finally returns to her mother to stay in fight to make sense of it all and to start from the very beginning it is in her relationship to her mother that devi hopes to find an dignity sorry an identity for herself now the another story which devi recollects here the story of gandhari by devi's grandmother 
The next story which was narrated by her grandma is about Gandhari who plays a significant role in the Mahabharata the great epic Gandhari was married to a very rich prince whose palace was twice as big twice as magnificent as a parent's palace on all the way he is very rich the marble pillars shone like mirrors whereas on meeting her husband for the first time in such a rich palace she was taken aback shocked for the white eyes and pupils glazed and useless gandhari in anger vowed never to see again the world so she bound her eyes with the help of a veil summing up the story devi's grandmother says she embraced her destiny a blind husband with a self sacrifice worthy of her royal blood got it now the previous story she told about a cunning woman now here a sacrifice through this story her mother teaches her sacrifice her grandmother teaches her sacrifice her grandmother says that gandhari embraced her destiny a blind husband with a self sacrifice worthy of her royal blood through the story through this story of gandhari devi learnt life through her grandmother's choice of gandhari gandhari's story once again reflected the life of sita that is devi's mother so before marriage her parents taught her to play veena she entered her husband house with a veena as a part of of her dowry after completing the household affairs which was considered as the foremost duty of the housewife her mother sita she used to play veena one day her father in law called her for performing some works before puja in the morning she did not hear as she was playing veena and the father in law scolded sita put the veena away are you a wife or a daughter in law in an anger and frustration sita pulled out the strings of veena and vowed not to play the veena again and replied in a whisper yes i am a wife and a daughter in law so here you have seen that how devi has connected the sacrifice of gandhari with the sacrifice of her mother sita who had lot of passion for playing veena and she could not play veena due to the remarks due to the comments of her father in law of her father in law and finally she vowed she promised that in her life she will never play because she is a wife and she is a daughter in law now there is a story of a girl who marries a snake another significant story told by her grandmother deals with a beautiful girl who marries who married a snake although devi's immature mind cannot decode the real purpose underlying the story it imprinted in a memory as a story throughout her life this story has created lot of influence on devi over devi how the story is like this a childless couple prays to god for a child and in return a snake is born to them when the snake grew up the parents planned a marriage the father walked to the distant lands in search of a bride when the host learns that he is in search of a girl for his vinam tongued son jairili a lot of poisonous son vinam tongued son who is in the shape of a snake he readily offered his gorgeous daughter the girl on seeing the snake as a husband wholeheartedly she accepted her fate saying a girl is given only once in marriage one night the serpent came into her room and spent a night with her next morning when she woke up surprisingly she found a handsome young man on a bed the story outlines the hindu concept of rebirth punarjanma devi correlates the story with the fate of the servant maid gauri 
so here we have the another character here devi connects this story with the fate with the destiny of a servant of a servant named gauri now we find here the story of amba from mahabharata this time grandmother dwells upon mahabharata for a story she talks about a story she talks about amba and this story is taken from mahabharata prince bhishma goes to swayamvara of three beautiful princes swayamvara of three beautiful princes amba ambika or ambalika amba ambika and ambalika amba the eldest one she chose king salva and she garlanded him but suddenly bhishma kidnapped all the three princes and took them to his stepmother when they came to know that amba was already married they let her to go to king salva unfortunately king salva refused to accept amba and insulted her insulted amba goes back to bhishma who also refused to accept her thereby she changed her attitude towards life and she vowed to avenge bhishma she went to the forest she did penance towards lord shiva having been pleased with the penance lord shiva gave her garland and promised her whoever wears this garland will surely kill bhishma this story reared a brave attitude in devi she daydreamed more and more about female avengers look at here how this story brought a kind of a, a revengeful attitude in devi's mindset so these lessons indelibly imprint themselves in devi's mind devi confesses devi confesses devi confesses she says i lived a secret life of my own i become a woman warrior a heroine i was devi now i rode a tiger and cut off evil magical demons heads just like durga right now there is a story of ganga and shantanu the most interesting story which has a message of motherhood is about ganga and shantanu told by devi's grandmother she says motherhood is more than the pretty picture you see of a tender woman bent over the baby she is feeding at a breast on walking along the bank of ganges king shantanu happened to meet a beautiful damsel he fell in love with her and in turn she had promised to marry him provided he did not interrupt her in her actions however difficult shantanu accepted it no sooner did she give birth to a child than what she used to do she used to kill it drowning in river ganges she used to kill all the children one by one to get them drowned in the river ganges but there was a promise shantanu should not interfere in her work she killed seven children shantanu could not approve of such conduct he could not tolerate and for time being he remained silent for holding up the vow upon the birth of the eighth child he could not refrain protesting her from drowning the child and the lady goes back to her normal form river ganges saying then take him be the father and mother to him she plunged into the river what did she say take him be the father and mother to him and she plunged into the river so there is a belief in the hindu mythology that the water of ganges purifies us of our sins of it of our sins papa sins for it flows from heaven because it flows from heaven the lady plunged into the water jumped into the water to wash away her sins after many years devi could not interpret the story sorry after few years devi could interpret the story and she concludes she interpret the story she says to be a good mother to be a mother at all you have to renew your wifely vows every day 
you have to change your vows every day it depends on the situation either you are mother or your wife so this is how she is learning she is recalling all the stories which her grandmother said and she is connecting those stories with her real life situation and this is how she she is she feels that what she has learned from such stories now moving ahead devi meets her father in law and caretaker come cook so after marrying now we are coming back to mahesh her married life after marrying mahesh devi meets her father in law baba her father in law's life name is baba and the caretaker come cook in that home and her name is mayama the emotional and mental in the emotional and mental incompatibility with mahesh brings her close to baba because of disconnectivity between uh, mahesh and um, devi devi becomes quite close to baba devi's relationship with baba her father in law becomes more stronger baba was a sanskrit professor an intellectual man he narrates some stories about womanhood and the wifely vows and duties in a household devi compares his stories with that of her grandmother look at now now she is comparing her grandmother's stories and her father in law's stories her stories are prelude to my womanhood and initiation into a subterranean possibilities she says while analyzing baba's stories devi says baba stories always have for the center point an exacting touchstone for a woman a wife baba talks about manu who is the creator of hindu code of conduct he teaches devi what brahminhood is he tells devi quoting from manu he says a brahmin shrinks from honors as from poison humility he covets as if it is nectar baba dwells deep on the vedas and sanskrit hymns devi feels glad to be a disciple to be a student of such an intellectual man baba her father in law now her maid come cook mayama mayama mayama's painful story of her survival is told repeatedly in this novella mayama's memory goes back to her own uh, mayama's memory goes back to her own marriage what happened to mayama mayama was an old caretaker come cook of devi's in-laws house she gets married at an early age of 12 and that too with a useless drunkard and gambler who came to her every night for physical for physical pleasure alone she knew no happiness in her marriage who mayama mayama survived her long suffering life as a wife daughter-in-law and mother her mother-in-law mayama's mother-in-law unable to check mayama's insights had to content herself with the astrologer's promise that mayama would bear her many strong grandsons she'll be having so many grandsons and she watches mayama's slim waist intently for the first year and second year she breaks into complaints her mother in law's abuse is habitual throughout mayama's married life when devi asked mayama why she had put up with her life she laughs till tears roll down her wrinkled cheeks tells her story teasing devi's childless childish childishness mayama's mother in law abuses her every day she forces mayama to fast every other day and to do penance to change the evil course of her horoscope mayama welcomed her penance like an old friend and did everything she could do she woke up at 4 in the morning walked to the pond prayed dipped herself again and again in the pure coldness why to get a baby one day she, the goddess she had prayed she has prayed blessed her womb and joy rushes through her blood after long prayers she is blessed with a son mayama's husband left the house taking away all the money and soon her mother-in-law also also 
passes away cursing her do mayama never saw her husband again she found his replica in the sun a prodigal from birth prodigal a lot of expenditure who does simply he waste money a prodigal from from birth mayama's son threatened and cursed even beat his mother till he finally caught a fever and he died so mayama's son is also no more in spite of his cruel behavior mayama serves her son on the deathbed the day mayama's son died mayama wept as she had not done for years she wept for her youth her husband the culmination of a life's handiwork now all these had been snatched from her so dear friends what's the conclusion of this novella here geeta hariharan in the novel the thousand faces of night has created characters of everyday life and with the measure problems very minute problems touches upon the larger issues of gender exploitation embedded in pedagogic discourses devi is the central character and other equally strong women characters are explored in relation to her these characters may appear very abnormal in their behavior in some cases but welcome life on their own terms with the eyes of devi and her emotions one comes to realize the condition of women in changing scenario geeta hariharan presents a picture of real society where such women characters do occur she selected the less prominent figures from the indian epics and puranas she talks about gandhari amba who are less known to the contemporary learners instead of talking about sita and savitri she talks about indian myths which are forgotten by many of us in the era of globalization and liberalization our sophisticated lives made us renounce our heritage on the whole this novel is the retelling of the past thus she turns into the act of restoration the restoration of lost indian tradition geeta hariharan not only indianized the incidents but also the use of language she abundantly used the indian words like agraharam ashtapadi like uh, nadaswaram like nagali pushpa and so on quite difficult to pronounce she takes the indian culture to the english speaking countries through the chosen indian vocabulary she has indianized a genre english fiction several indian women writers have attempted to transform a woman's status from victimization to empowerment and project a new sense of women's women's identity geeta hariharan deals with the question of women's identity and her innate strength lies in a struggle for survival dissatisfied with the age old norms that emphasize women's passive role as a wife geeta hariharan attempts to establish a new order her vision encompasses the whole history of the whole story of women's role and edifies the emergence of a new woman who is true to her own self now let's recapitulate the whole story line of this novel the thousand faces of night number 1 devi first of all you should not forget devi has connected all the stories told by her grandmother devi grew up among stories and myths then devi uh, about her childhood devi grows older there is a concept of swayamvara nala and damyanti she connects this swayamvara with her life then we find devi's husband and her relationship devi and mahesh then she she starts to find herself a kind of her own image then there's a story of gandhari again she connects this story with her real life the story of girl who marries uh, who marries a snake 
and this story has brought a great impact on a mind the story of amba then the story of ganga and shantanu then devi meets father in law her father in law and caretaker come cook as well as she speaks about mayama and her mother in law devi has also brought her story with a person um, gopal with whom she runs away and then she is in the quest of her self image so this is how the novel the thousand faces of night where geeta hariharan has brought the plight of women by weaving the different threads of the stories from mahabharata and um, ramayana where she has brought the characters which are not much known to everyone so dear friends this is how i have tried to summarize or explain the novel the thousand faces of night and i hope this video will help you to answer the maximum questions which appear from this novel thank you so much for watching dear friends thank you so much for watching this video you can reach me at mukeshenglish@gmail.com please do subscribe the channel click on the like button for more videos on literature workbook pronunciation grammar communication skills presentation skills interview skills stay in tune with mukesh english thank you once again